Any passionate, hardworking record label owner will potentially face these three downfalls, if you will, in the music industry or while running and setting up their record label. The relentless pressures of the music industry causes some of these downfalls, especially from the discouragement of the music streams that come in to someone who's not so used to seeing terrible income streams. But what's happening here is the label is ultimately not breaking even or barely breaking even. And when you're in a position where the label is barely breaking even, that means it barely has enough money to pay either the subcontracted staff, the artists, their royalties, or anybody else royalties that may need it. Ultimately, you might feel a little bit doubtful that your record label may even survive at this point, but you gotta remember there's a lot more involved than just signing a talent that you thought would be a great fit for you and what you wanted to do going forward. It's more than just a talent. So we gotta delve into the business on this episode of the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. I'm gonna break down these three steps in a couple slides or these three downfalls in a couple slides that you need to be worried about when it comes to this triad of trouble for new record label owners. Check it out. So our goal is our first downfall. The first step to overcoming the pressures of the music industry is to develop a clear and realistic business goal. Aligning all efforts from the artist team Okay, that's important, the artist and the manager, and then the labels team, that's you and your subcontracted staff, towards a shared vision not only provides a roadmap for the label, but also instills confidence in the label owner's ability to steer the ship. It reinforces their belief that talent, when backed by well-executed plans, paves the path to success. So a solid goal helps align the business, bolsters the confidence, and supports the notion that the talent is vital to success. However, without those goals, man, it is not happening for you and the crew or the artist and their team. So let me break down my goal formula. I figured I'd just bring it back because I keep referring everybody to that other video, but let me just put it in this one so it always is a common theme. Our goal formula is I will accomplish X by Y for Z because of A. The only reason why I'm putting in Z, Z is our value factor but I'm putting in that Z because we need to understand the value. So we're gonna do an action by a certain time for a certain amount of money because we need to do A, X, Y, Z for A. All right, so if we get that money in, then we can do this. So you have to know what you're, gonna get, what you're doing this for. This is the full formula that I use because it allows me to know what am I doing this for. I know what I'm doing it by when I wanna accomplish it, but then I'm ultimately doing it for this. And if I don't complete it, then I can't get this accomplished. So it keeps me trailing along. You see what I'm saying? Now, so that was our first downfall. The next downfall is the team. The next piece of the puzzle lies in building a cohesive, committed team. So many start on their own, but you can't do this on your own. You need a team. Pause for a second. And I'll even say this. In the very beginning, if you're a new record label owner, you really can't do this yourself. It's not the same as being an artist and you can get a lot of this stuff done. You have time to work things out. No, because you're there to expedite the career of the artist. You don't have the afford, you're not afforded the opportunity to do this alone by yourself. So you need to identify your key players that you're going to work with for your initial investment. Now, each member should play to their strengths, working together to push the label towards its goals. Moreover, a united team signifies the label's commitment to its artists and their artistry, showing that they are competent to work together as a team to create a union that can coexist with the artist team, artist team, talent, and creativity. All right, your team has to work cohesively with the artist team because if it doesn't, then you start to have bad relationship vibes going on. So, this is something that you need to work on. You need to get your key players in place here when you're starting your record label. And, artists, I mean, I know you're watching this video, but this is really for the record label owners simply because you need to know that they actually have a team. All right. Now, here's our next downfall. Financial health and cash flow management. Maintaining a healthy financial state is crucial for any business, more so for a record label. The label owner must develop and maintain a robust financial plan that carefully manages expenditures while strategizing diverse income sources. OK, I'll read it again. The label owner must develop and maintain a robust financial plan. That's our goals that we just we put out 
right? And we'll have to have a goal for the financial matters too that carefully manages expenditures, money going out, while strategizing diverse income sources, meaning we have to create the income sources, all right? And we have to build a strategy around those income sources to make sure that we have enough money coming in so we can profit. You see how I did that? Now, acquiring financial literacy skills is not just about understanding numbers. It ain't. It's about reducing stress and increasing confidence in decision making within the team. Right. So if you know that you have money coming in, then the team feels confident that money is coming in. Now the team feels confident that they can continue to do their job and they have money to support them with the tasks that they need to do that are at hand. That's what this is meaning. So furthermore, sound financial management doesn't have to compromise artistic integrity as long as a budget is made for it. So what I mean by making a budget for artistic integrity is kind of like an insurance budget. It's like an oops budget. It's like a budget to give us a little more wiggle room to try stuff. You see what I'm saying? So if you focus strictly on financial management, you may restrict the creativity of the label. This is not a this is a company, but it's a creative type of company. And we have to allow wiggle room to experiment with certain different things as the artists may want to try different things out. And you have to have the wiggle room money wise to help them do that. So here's a simple cash flow formula for you. Income minus operating expenses minus 30% tax equals your business profit. And this is for labels who are generating $150,000 and below. This is ultimately what your scenario is going to look like right here. Okay. Anything over that, it's going to be different, totally different game plan. But this is for all my new label owners. You might have $100,000 to invest, but ultimately everybody has to start right back at music streams, right at the print on demand merch, right at the beginning. So when your income comes in, you're going to tally up everything that is going out due to operating expenses, like the recording budget and all that stuff. And then you're going to start recouping from there. And then eventually you will have to tax the money. And then after that, you will have business profit. This is a complex comment I'm going to make. But if you know how to use credit, this is when it would come into play. Meaning that you would want to use that credit to help you float some of these expenses or to help you handle new money that needs to go out so you can bring in more money on the income side. That's a little bit more of an advanced conversation, but I just wanted to to uh, throw that note in there. All right. So now fans, listeners, and customers, this is our next downfall here. I think, was that three already? Lastly, a successful record label is nothing without its audience. The label must implement effective marketing strategies to reach, engage, and grow its fan base. It just has to. The label has to have a fan base too, but it doesn't go over the artist fan base because the artist fan base comes in first. Check it out. However, this isn't just about seeing people as consumers. Yes, they have money to spend, but they're not. The label owner must learn to view and treat the artist audience as part of the label's community, which will strengthen their relationship with the fans. This approach validates the label owner's belief that a loyal fan base grows from quality music and genuine artist fan relationships, not just clever marketing gimmicks. Pause for a second. If you sign an artist with a fan base, that fan base then enters the label's portal when they're ready to buy stuff like tickets, merch, and exclusive stuff. Okay, because I'll give you a hint. Due to your contract, you probably overtook the artist's website and you have control of those operations, so now their fans become yours. I'm not talking about the listeners. I'm talking about the fans. So as you begin to build a brand of the record label, let's say you go and you sign another artist that is close to let's say what you what what you signed previously so then we can use our master p concept and as we send out emails based on the emails we collected from the artists we signed then we can put a little advertisement in the bottom saying check out what's new from you know such and such records and it's an artist that's related to the artist that we signed you see you see how that works so once you acquire an entire being a record label owner allows you to acquire a lot so once you acquire that base, you can now mix it with another base. So it's it's about more than just sales. It's about building a community that loves and supports the music the label produces. You see what I'm saying? So now, what if my goals are too ambitious and set the label up for failure rather than success? See, it's vital to set ambitious yet realistic goals. Remember that goals are not set in stone. They're flexible and can be adjusted as the label grows and evolves. Moreover, the act of setting goals is a step towards success 
in itself as it provides a clear direction for your label. If you start to feel overwhelmed, take a step back, reassess your objectives, and tweak them to better align with your capabilities and resources. So it wouldn't be a successful goal to say this would be an ambitious goal. I sign an artist, let's just say you put all $100,000, you put it all on the table. You bet all of it on one artist. And you say, I want to 10x the money that I'm putting in. So I want to make the million back. I want to put in 100000 I want to make a million. That's very ambitious. So hopefully the artist already has something going, and hopefully you already have the connections in place to make that happen by, I don't know, let's say in 18 months, you want to 10x the amount invested. Ambitious. It would be conservative to say, I want to do half that. I want to put in 100000 and I want to 5x the investment. See what I'm saying? So anyway, that's just what it is right there. So I understand the need for a team, but I'm worried about cost. How can I afford to hire the right people? While hiring a team does involve cost, and it does, it's crucial to see that this is an investment rather than expense. Because it is. Your team will help lighten the workload, bring in new ideas, and potentially increase your label's income. Start small and hire strategically based on your most pressing needs. Now, this can be a subcontracting thing where you just hire for the task at hand and then they're out of there. They just do the job to get out of there. As your label grows, you can gradually expand your team and maybe hire full-time people. Also, consider outsourcing or hiring part-time or freelance professionals to balance your financial resources. And that's, that's what I just said. So ultimately, with $100,000 or $50,000 or $30,000 or even $10,000, you won't be able to hire a team. But everything will be outsourced. Now, I'm a music enthusiast, not a financial expert. Is it really necessary for me to delve deep into financial planning and management? Ooh, that's a good question. While it's true that your passion lies in music, a basic understanding of financial planning and management is crucial when running a record label. It's not about becoming a financial expert. It's about understanding your label's financial health and making informed decisions. You can always seek help from financial advisors or take short courses to improve your skills. Remember, financial management is key to your label's sustainability and growth. It enables you to invest appropriately in your art and talent. Point blank, period. Without this financial health, man, the artist ain't going to be happy, which means if they're not happy, then they're going to leave. You're going to default on the contract and they're going to leave and it's just not going to be a happy day for everybody. So you do want to have some skills in financial management, especially as the record label owner. While I know you're getting started, chances are I know you don't have a foundation for the $100,000, $50,000, $30,000, or $10,000 that you're planning to invest. So therefore, I established something called the 60-Day Record Label Course, and it is a framework to establish your record label in a perfect 60-day sequence. So what you're going to do is you're going to learn how to set up the LLC and your bank account flawlessly to, for some base-level anonymity. And then we're going to set up your records and publishing division to collect domestic and international publishing royalties without the middleman taking 15%. And then you're going to utilize the contract templates to get you in the game right away. Because if you have someone who can explain these contracts to you like me, then you're going to understand them a lot better. Okay? Everything is covered like BMI, ASCAP, Sound Exchange, the MLC, Music Reports, the Harry Fox Agency, Luminate, AllMusicISRC.com, Music Distributors, and much more. All of that is packed into this comprehensive course. And you may say, well, how much is it? I'm going to tell you it's 275 or five easy payments of 55 bucks, man. That's it. I'm saving you 12 months of time and condensing it down to two months. I don't think you can get anything better than that to have a record label that goes straight out the door in 60 days and all you got to do is bring your cash to it. I think you're going to be quite satisfied with it. Now, let's develop a strategy for you. So book a one hour call. If this is your, you know, 10th, 15th time watching some videos on this channel because I know you need a strategy to go forward. And then if, if you've already jumped into the 60-day record label, book a call with me so we can build a strategy so you can move forward because I want you to win out here. Ultimately, if this is your first time watching the channel, grab the free stuff below. But here is the desired outcome that you should want to shoot for. The clear goal setting, establishing well-defined realistic business goals can lead to a focused effort towards shared vision and success. Then the team building, right? 
constructing a committed, cohesive team can bring a variety of skills and talents to the table, pushing the label towards its goals. And then financial literacy is going to kick in now because you're going to understand and manage the label's finances and you're going to ensure stability, reducing stress and building decision making confidence. All right. But ultimately, the effective cash flow management will be crucial for us and getting the desired outcome. Proper management of income and expenditures helps in maintaining the label's financial health and uh, sustainability. You know that now. So audience engagement is great, too, because implementing effective strategies to reach, engage and grow the fan base can result in a loyal community supporting the label's music. And then finally, getting the desired outcome with relationship building brings in seeing the audience as part of the label's community and cultivating genuine artist fan relationships can lead to a strong supportive fan base. It just is what it is. I don't have to tell you that without applying some of this stuff, you're probably going to end up slumping back to square one. So that means a lack of clear goals. And without clear goals, efforts can become misdirected, leading to confusion, wasting of resources and ultimately failure. And then poor team dynamics, because if the team is not united or lacks the necessary skills, it can impede the label's process towards its goals. Neglecting financial management causes a failure to manage the label's finances, and that can lead to financial instability, poor decision making and possible bankruptcy. And ultimately, the relationship with the artist goes under because it's like I trusted you for these 18, 24, 36, 48 months of my life. And it and it just didn't go the way I wanted it to go. So you're going to lose that relationship. I don't want you to lose that relationship. So with that being said, the first steps you can take is to jump into the 60 day record label course. Get this thing structured from the bottom up. OK. So that you can lead the correct way. This is not where you want to be because losing 10, 30, 50, 100 grand is not a, you know, it's not a fun time for you. This is where we want to be. I want you to take your time, build it right, get it done right, get the team together and then go forward. Ultimately, if you take some of these three points or all of them, really, and you apply them to what you do, you can transform the record label that you have now that may be currently struggling into an industry leader, potentially at some point within the career span of the actual label itself. Music Money Makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Jump into the 60 day record label. Download the free stuff below. Book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com and I'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.